let's talk about my favorite and least favorite books of 2023. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Marina. If you have not come across one of my videos before, I like to post a lot of lifestyle content as well as my podcast called Chaos and Coffee. You can listen to it here on YouTube or on Spotify. The link is down below. And today I am discussing all of the books that I read in 2023, what I liked about the books, what I hated about the books, and the ratings I give my books. Not my books, the books I read. Without further ado, let's get into this video. My go-to way to read is on my Amazon Kindle. I think I have the 2022 version. If you know me in person, I notoriously have very tiny hands, so I like having this little thing to read off of. Also, it fits in most of my purses, which is a plus. And I have a cute little pink case on it. I got it on Amazon. Well, I got both of these things on Amazon, essentially. But anyways, let's get into my list of books that I have read. In total, I read... 15 books this year, which is a pretty decent achievement for me because before 2023, I hated reading. I did want to mention I'm really bad at remembering authors' names, so I didn't include the authors' names in these books, but these are all pretty popular books, so it won't be hard to find them. Starting off with- oh my god, my eye is twitching. Stop! I'm trying to film. Starting off with the first book, it is part of a series. I read It Ends With Us and I did read It Starts With Us but I read it in 2022 so it doesn't count. So for It Ends With Us, I gave it a three star rating. The biggest thing that I can say about all of the Colleen Hoover books that I've ever read, there are a few on this list, is that I'm not the biggest fan of how Colleen Hoover writes. So a lot of the Colleen Hoover books that I've read get less than a five or four star review simply because of her writing style. I'm not a huge fan of it. I think that it's just too cliche. There's not a lot of in-depth like literary devices used in the book and as much as I wish I didn't have to say this because I absolutely hated taking English in high school, literary devices make books better. I think the two biggest reasons why this book was bumped two stars was because there are a lot of trigger warnings for in this book and in pretty much all Colleen Hoover books there is some sort of really intense traumatic thing that happens to the character that I just don't think she writes well about. The timelines in this book are also kind of abrupt. Things that I did like about this book, I did like the story as a whole. I thought that it was a really cute story. I thought that it was like a satisfying ending to the sequel but unfortunately it did get bumped two stars because of those two negative things that I didn't like. Moving into book Number two, we are going to be discussing Heart Bones. This book got two stars. I was... I wasn't a huge fan of it. The beginning was relatively good. I actually did enjoy the beginning of the book, but once the love interest kind of entered the story, everything got really, really cringy. The dialogue between the two main characters was like uncomfortable to read. This is one of her less steamy books. There aren't really any steamy scenes going on in this book to what I can remember, but like the dialogue between the characters, specifically the love interests, were just, it was weird. I didn't like it. Moving into book number three. This is one of my favorite books that I've ever read. And I know we're starting off the video on kind of a low note, just with all of my lower ratings but this one got five stars and it is 100% worth reading and it is such an easy read as well. This is the Spanish Love Deception. I literally put in the notes, OMG, so good. The author took a really easy predictable plot and made it really exciting. So even though like the majority of the book you kind of know what's gonna happen, you're still like turning page after page after page because you're so into what is happening in the story. This is a very, very steamy book though. But it is, I feel like it's more steamy, but like in a tasteful way. I finished this book in four days, which says a lot because I tend to be a pretty slow reader. I think one of the reasons why I finished this book so quickly, and I think that this is like golden that the author wrote this book in this way. Once you're about halfway through the book, you're convinced that the steamy scene is about to happen. She teases you. She puts you on a little roller coaster of emotions and you just keep going page after page, chapter after chapter, and you're like, oh, it's totally gonna happen in this chapter. And even when it doesn't, you're still satisfied after reading that chapter. So you keep reading, you keep reading, you keep reading. And like, obviously, eventually the steamy scene happens, but like every chapter going on top of each other is leading into it in such like an entertaining and like fascinating way. I very vividly remember reading this book and laying in bed. I think it was like 10 p.m. at night and I just kept reading the book, reading the book, reading the book and I finally finished the book. Didn't even realize that it was two in the morning. Like I 
time did not exist while I was reading this book. All right, moving into book number four. This is Every Summer After, and I gave this book four stars. I really, really enjoyed it. It was a really, really wholesome and cute story. The plot itself was really interesting, actually, and I really liked all of the intricate de details that were added in. I also really love books that take place in different timelines, not different times, different timelines, where like one chapter is present day and maybe like two chapters later it's a flashback to kind of explain a background of something. The only problem that I had with this book was that in present day I feel like the choppiness of some chapters were a little or not chapters some choppiness from the plot was a little weird to me they don't introduce the elevation of the love interest very well I don't know if that's a good way to put it, but obviously it didn't bother me too much. I do think the plot is still really, really good. Book number five. This book is Beach Read, and I gave it four stars. This book was kind of really funny. I really liked it. The way that she just writes it into the book is just so natural and so just, oh my goodness. And it's not that the book itself is funny. It's just that there's little tidbits added into the book that are kind of comical, and it really adds to the main character of the story. Like it really gives her like a funny like lighthearted personality even though the book itself is not all lighthearted. The reason why this book did not get five stars is because of the ending of the book and I'm not going to give away what the ending is. All I'm gonna say is that the entire plot of the book should have given the author a really good incentive to add a really interesting ending and I feel like the author could have taken the plot of the book and ran with it with the ending. This next book is probably one of the f my favorite books that I have read. It is called In Five Years and I gave this five stars. This is a very short read. It's a very thin book and I it made me cry. Like it was a good book. It's super easy to read. You can read this book in one day if you wanted to. The plot isn't completely predictable at first, um, but once you know, like, once everything is lined up in the book, you pretty much know how it's going to end. And the author still just does such a good job at not making the book like a cliche book, even when you know how it's going to end. Book number seven, The American Roommate Experiment. This is somewhat of a sequel to The Spanish Love Deception. It involves same characters, but instead of it being the main character from The Spanish Love Deception, it is the main character's best friend's love story. And this is a really good book. I gave it five stars as well. Both American Love or American Roommate Experiment and Spanish Love Deception are like very high up there on my favorite books that I've ever read. This is just as steamy as The Spanish Love Deception. Number eight, we have All Your Perfects. This is another Colleen Hoover book. I think we all know where I'm about to go with this. She just trauma dumps in these books and I'm just not a huge fan of it. I gave it three stars. The plot itself is really, really good. It's just her writing style that I have a bone to pick with. But anyways, there's a truck outside. I'll be right back. I think it's gone. It might come back. This is a really good book to read if you're in between books and you just need a quick easy read to kind of plow through while you're looking for a good book to read because I feel like the book itself is actually kind of interesting. Like the plot is good. It's just the author that I have an issue with. There are some trigger warnings, as I said, uh, for a few different reasons. Um, one would be infertility and then the other one would be cheating. So I would keep that in mind while you're reading this book. Number nine, very few words for this book. It is Love on the Brain, two stars, started it, made it like five chapters in, could not finish it. Number 10, we have The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I gave this book three stars but not for the reason that you think. It's not the plot. I just don't like the length of the book. I do think that the book is written really, 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 really well. I just cannot, I can't do long books because I feel like I'll get bored of the plot after a while. But the story itself, like the storyline is really interesting. And I also really love that you get two different main character perspectives that are not intertwined, which I think is really genius to have in a book like this 
So you not only get the story of Evelyn Hugo, who is one of the main characters, you also get the story of the girl who is speaking with Evelyn Hugo, which I think is really cool. Number 11, this book, five stars. It is called Hidden Pictures, and this is not a steamy book. Let me repeat. This is not a steamy book. This is not even a love book. This is a thriller. I would like to start by saying I am not a scary story person book. I am not- <laughs> do you know what I meant to say? I don't like watching scary things. I don't like reading scary things. I don't like talking about scary things. This was a phenomenal book. I do want to mention since this book is like a thriller, it's a little paranormal, if you're concerned about that, after the sixth chapter it's no longer scary and a lot of things start to become more and more explained so once you make it past that sixth chapter it's not scary it's not creepy so if you're concerned about like staying up all night because you're terrified of this book i'd recommend reading past the sixth chapter just so you can get more of an explanation of what's going on number 12 before i say what this book is i would like to preface this does not change how i feel about colleen hoover this was just a once in a lifetime Thing that happened. The book is maybe someday. I did give it four stars. Even though I'm not a Colleen Hoover fan, I did actually really enjoy this book. The plot is really interesting and I also really like the different character traits and the development of the different character traits. Actually was a decent book and I think it's because she didn't trauma dump as hard in this book. She did, but not as hard. And I really like how the different like character traits were used to develop the plot. I think that was something that really separated this book from other books that I read from her. This book definitely has some depressing aspects to it, but it also has some really like cool aspects to it, which I think is really interesting. Number 13, One Italian Summer, five stars. Very, 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 very good book. I really, really liked it. It was, it was just a good, satisfying book to read and it's an interesting plot. It's definitely a little abstract of a plot. Um, it takes such a simple, simple concept and just makes it so interesting. Number 14, second to last book on my list. This book is Mr. Wrong Number. I gave it five stars. This book was really fun to read. I feel like this was a really fun book despite how kind of depressing this main character's life was. It was a fun read and I really really liked how this author wrote the story. I think that that's why I enjoyed it so much. The plot is so easy to predict. I figured out what the plot was gonna be like two, three chapters in. Like it was a very easy plot to figure out. However, it was still really entertaining and I still was like, wait, what happens next? What happens next? I know what's gonna happen next, but how does it happen? And I love that the main character is just so chaotic. Like I loved reading about her. I thought that the main character, like the way that the author wrote about the main character was like, if I was in that situation, I'd be her. And finally, we are on to the final book of 2023. This book is Happy Place. I give this book five stars. We ended on a very, very high note. This book was phenomenal. It was amazing. I love it. Again, I do like this about books. I like how it flashes back to prior moments, like in the character's life, and it gives more context about like the current situation. And I also just love reading about all the different characters. Like I feel like each character is so different, but also they work well together. It's basically a big friend group and they're on vacation and that's all I'm gonna say. I also, this is kind of weird, but I like that the plot is not the 100% focus of the story going on in the book. I know the plot and the story are kind of the same thing, but like overall, like the thing that you are focusing on in the book, like the story between these two people, there's also some whole other story going on with the entire friend group, which I think also makes this book kind of entertaining because you're not only focusing on something that you know is probably going to end in a way that you can assume it's going to, you're also rooting for like this whole friend group. But overall, those those are all of the- ow! I just ripped my hair. Overall, those are all of the books that I read in 2023. I cannot believe that I read 15 books and I know that to some people that's not a lot. I only tend to read like an hour at a time anyways when I do read and I tend to read maybe like twice a week so for me that's a pretty big accomplishment. If you have any book recommendations that you think I should read for 2024, please let me know in the comments and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Go check out the other videos that I have on my channel as well as my podcast and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!